So the first option is called lateral suture stabilization, and it's the least invasive of the different CCL surgeries in that there's no bone cutting. Now they do drill a hole, the tibia, they use a synthetic cable material. It's pretty strong and they, they do a, um, a looping pattern between the bones so that the bones are attached to each other. It's almost like this suture material is acting like the new CCL. The joint can still move, so the knee joint can still bend and extend like a normal knee, but there can't be excessive shift. That's what causes your dog pain. Now, the thing with lateral suture stabilization is recovery has to be taken slowly. One of the questions that the surgeon needs to ask is, what is your ability physically? And then also your time commitment to taking care of your dog after surgery. If you can be diligent and you're gonna take the time to make sure that the dog doesn't have excessive movement. Now, this means that the dog can't pull while they're leashed. They can't roughhouse with people or other pets. They definitely can't run free. There can be no jumping. Why is this important? Because all it takes is one quick move and that suture material, even though it's pretty strong, can snap. There are other surgeons who say lateral suture technique should only be used on lighter weight dogs because heavily muscled dogs or really large dogs can more easily break the suture material. That said, when I had my dog's uh, consult with a lateral suture doctor, she said that she performed surgery on dogs much heavier and more active, so they were actually sporting dogs. Um, my dog is not a sporting dog. He likes to lay around a lot, uh, and he's a pit bull, so he's definitely heavily muscled, but she said that she thought that the surgical technique would hold up for him. Uh, she also recommended that I consult with a TPLO doctor, which I did, and I eventually went for TPLO just because I didn't want to take the chance that the suture material would break. Now, here's what happens if it does. The dog then is in more pain, right? Because now they've got that shifting action going on between the tibia and the femur. It's because that CCL, the ligament that is torn, is not holding those bones and checking that excessive movement. So there's too much shifting when, when the thing is torn. Now with the cord that's in there, if that gets broken, you have to go in there again. That means another surgery, more money, more pain for your dog and a longer recovery. And they have to try to either repair the suture material or you might have to go with one of the stronger surgical fixes like TPLO, TTA, MMP, or CBLO, because sometimes with a failed LSS, you have to go for one of the stronger fixes because if you just, if they just repair it, sometimes the dog just keeps tearing it. So do know that. The next one I'm going to talk about is tibial tuberosity advancement or TTA. That one involves a vertical bone cut through the tibia and then they, the surgeon puts in a wedge shaped implant. Now this technique is one of the ones that is a little bit older. My dog surgeon, when I asked about TTA, said that sometimes these dogs have a couple different possibilities for complications. One being that if there is infection, they have to go in there and try and take that wedge out. And she said it just becomes very surgically complicated to remove that, that implant. My dog surgeon doesn't do TTA, she likes TPLO better. So if you're thinking about that one, don't worry. You, you'll need to get more information and I'm gonna help you with the questions to ask surgeons in another video. The next one is called MMP, and that stands for Modified Mackay Procedure. It's like a TTA, only the wedge that they use is called orthofoam. The orthofoam wedge is said to be what's called bacteriostatic, meaning that it's less apt to cause an infection later on down the line. So what the, that means is that there would be less likelihood that that implant would have to be removed at a later stage. It is kind of porous. So when the bone heals around this wedge, it actually kind of knits through, the new bone growth kind of knits through and it becomes one with the wedge. My worry, and something I'd want you to ask the doctor is, if this thing had to be removed, how is that done? If now the bone has integrated into the, the implant, I can't imagine 
what would happen if that thing had to be removed for whatever reason. The next procedure is called TPLO. It stands for tibial plateau leveling osteotomy. And so with some dogs, the tibial plateau is kind of at an angle. And if you think of it kind of as though you would think of a car parked on a uh, snowy or icy incline, as that car is parked, maybe it slides down a little bit. I'm gonna use my hands, I know this is not that great, but let's say this is the top of the tibia, which is the bigger bone on the bottom of the leg. And this is the bottom of the femur. Where they come together, they form a joint, okay? And that is the knee joint that opens and closes. Flexes or extends would be the actual terminology. In a human knee, this is just kind of a fun little fact. Our tibial plateau is pretty level, and so with the TPLO, it's almost like they're creating a knee that's almost kind of human-like. What they do is they make a, a curved cut. So let's say that now we have a steep tibio tibial plateau with a torn CCL that's not doing its job. And so what happens is the bottom part of the femur is actually slipping down that, that slippery slope, right? Because the, the CCL isn't holding the bone in place. So what happens is the tibia juts forward and it causes a lot of shearing action. It's called tibial um, thrust and it causes a lot of pain in the dog, right? So what the, the surgeon is gonna do is make a curvilinear cut and then they actually take this piece now that's kind of separate and they slide it down that curved cut. But it changes the biomechanics of how the knee moves because now this dog has a much decreased tibial plateau angle. With TPLO, this is a very strong fix. It's one of the oldest of the CCL procedures. It's the reason why I think I felt most apt to, to choose this procedure. It has been studied extensively and they're still studying long-term outcomes with, with this procedure. They have refined the plate and the screws, the screws lock in, so it, it resists um, screws backing out. I still have seen that, but I'm not sure if those were um, the locking plate technology or what. So ask the, the surgeon which type of plates they use, which brand, and whether, those, whether everything locks together. It is the go-to procedure for CCL tear. It's the most commonly done one. So it's, that's why it's been researched the most. Because it's been done so often, we can actually look at dogs over a longer span of time because it's not a new procedure. You know, when we think about a procedure like MMP, apparently it's been done elsewhere, not in the U.S., for longer than it has been done here in the States. So they have maybe some more longitudinal studies than we have. But when we look at TPLO versus a newer technique, we know kind of how this thing has stood the test of time by um, the outcomes studies that we see. And then the last one that I want to talk about is CBLO, and that stands for Cora Based Leveling Osteotomy. It is the newest procedure and therefore the one that is not studied long term very well. They're doing these things called augmentations. And what that means is when they do CBLO and the implant fails or a bone fractures, then they have to figure out ways to make the CBLO repair stronger. They do it with a surgical augmentation. They use a new thing with CBLO called a tension band. CBLO, not tested for a very long time. So you wanna to talk to your doctor and make sure if you do like this, this as an option, that your doctor has done a lot of these surgeries. Ask for the number. Thanks so much for watching. You know a lot more than you did before you started the video and I want you to keep learning. Don't worry, you've got this.